Hello and welcome to the section 4.1 lecture today. Today we're going to talk about unit rates um, and that's kind of a big uh, big jumping off point for our whole graphing idea. Um, so so we're gonna we're gonna learn how to uh, find and use unit rates today. All right so the first thing that's on there says that uh, commonly used rates like miles per hour make it easy to understand and, and compare those rates. So uh, another word for rate or a generalization of rate is to think of speed and, and just as they say in miles per hour. If we just say that, you know, we walked, um, you know, say we walked 20 miles in 10 minutes, but but our friend walked um, 13 miles in, in uh, you know, in, in five minutes, how do we really compare those two and how do we relate those two to each other to make them easy to understand. And that's really what, what converting things into a unit rate can do for us. Oops. So <coughs> here it says, Jeff hikes a half a mile every 15 minutes um, or one fourth of an hour. Lisa hikes one third of a mile every 10 minutes or one sixth of an hour. How far do they each hike in one hour and in two hours? That's the same idea that we're we're comparing uh, right at the start. We're kind of comparing apples and oranges, and, and we want to compare apples to apples. Okay. Um, so the first part here says use the bar diagram to help you determine how many miles Jeff hikes. Um, so how many one fourth of an hour in one hour? Well, there's one, two, three, four. And if he hikes one half of a mile for every one of those, how far is he going to make it in the full hour? So basically we see another half a mile, another half a mile, and another half a mile. So he's going to make it one half, one whole, one and a half, two whole miles. Um, so to answer both these questions, um, there are four, I'm going to say it this way, four quarter hours. In one hour. Sorry that that's written kind of poorly. Um, and then so how far does Jeff hike in one hour? He hikes two miles. Um, so this is the time in hours that has gone by and how far Jeff has hiked. Um, so in, in half a mile, or it, it, he covers half a mile, sorry, in a fourth of an hour. In a half hour, this long, he's made it one mile. In three-fourths of an hour, he's made it one and a half miles. And in one hour, he's made it two miles. So how far is he going to make it in two hours? Well, if he makes it two miles in one hour, he's probably going to make it four miles in two hours. That's the main idea behind unit rates. And that just makes it easier to calculate. If we, if we know Jeff in total is, is hiking two miles per hour, we can figure out all those other denominations of hours or extensions of hours based off of that one piece of information. Uh, complete the bar diagram to help you determine how far Lisa hikes. So Lisa hikes in one sixth of an hour. I think it said one third of a mile, right? Yeah, one third of a mile. So one third of a mile. And we want to know how far is she going to go in one hour? Again, this box up here is is one hour, um, and I think we want to yeah we want to show how many miles over that time time span. So each one of these is one third of a mile. Of a mile. Each one of these pieces one third, one third, one third. Um, there ends up being six one thirds, and you can look at this as an addition problem or a multiplication problem. Okay. If we want to look at it as a multiplication problem, since there's six of these one-thirds of an hour in an hour, we're looking at six times one-third. Actually, let me write that as six over one 
times 1 over 3. 6 times 1 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. Or you could have looked to do some cross-reducing. Either way, I, fi I figure out that 6 thirds of a mile, or 6 thirds, is equal to 2 miles. So she is traveling 2 miles. And that's our answer right here. Okay. Let's figure that out kind of like we did above for kind of a step-by-step. -step. Um, in one-sixth of an hour, she travels one-third of a mile. In one-third of an hour, or two-sixths of a mile, she's traveling two-thirds of a mile. Sorry, one-third of an hour. I apologize. It's been just a long day. Um, and then in one-half of an hour, she's gone one-third, 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 She's gone one mile. Okay. So in one hour, she's going two miles. And in two hours, she's going four miles. So I'll bet they're going to say who travels farther um, or who travels faster. Um, both of them are actually going two miles in one hour. How did you find Jeff's distance for three-fourths of an hour? Well, we just added up. We added his, I believe, half a mile. Yeah, half a mile. Three times. Okay. Um, because he went half a mile in a fourth of an hour. Which hiker walks farther in one hour, which one is faster? The, those two questions are kind of the same thing. Um, they both hike. Two miles in one hour. And that right there is a unit rate. They've traveled two miles in one hour, so that makes it a unit rate, which is pretty cool. Uh, so finding unit rates, let's look at how we can do that in a, in a more general setting. A rate is a comparison of two quantities that have different units. That's the key there. Um, just like in these examples, we're talking about miles and hours. So one unit is miles, the other one is hours. So rates are often expressed as unit rates, which means the denominator is one. And that's what we did in just the problem above. We figured out how far they traveled in one mile. And that's the, that's the biggest, uh, the biggest thing that we want to figure out. We, even if we are given a general rate like we were, uh, we want to figure out how to turn that into a unit rate where the denominator is one. So we're talking about one hour, how many feet per one second, um, how many kilometers per one hour, those kind of things. Okay. Um, it says here when the two quantities are being compared in and the rate are, are both fractions, um, then we express that as what we call a complex fraction, where it's just a fraction over a fraction. Okay? And it just turns into a division problem. That's the easier way to, to deal with it. Okay, So it says here when remodeling her kitchen, Angela is repainting. She estimates that she paints 55 square feet every half hour. How many square feet does Angela paint in one hour? Well, we're kind of writing a complex fraction here. It's like half of a complex fraction. Um, the rate is the number of square feet, or area in square feet, in how many hours? So a rate, in general, is just when you write it as the two different quantities written as a fraction. But the unit rate is when we move that denominator to be one. So that's the only difference between those two, uh, those two kind of key terms there. So we find Angela's rate of painting uh, in area painted per time. Okay, so, so area painted in some number of hours. She paints 55 square feet in one half of an hour. So area painted over time is 55 square feet over one half of an hour. Now we want to find it in feet per hour, finding her unit rate. And to do that, we just carry out the division. Okay? Whatever our, 
whatever our fraction looks like, we turn that into a division problem and we actually do that division. So in this case, 55 divided by one half. Well, to do that, we would keep switch flip, keep 55, switch it to multiplication and flip our fraction, which is exactly what they do. And they just rewrite that 55 as 55 over one to make it a little bit easier. You could have just as easily written it as, okay, well that means this equals 55 times two. Here we go. 55 times two, and the only, I guess the only reason to keep it as a fraction is that we are talking about a unit right here. So we do need some kind of a fraction, but rarely do we actually continue that. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a second. So we get 55 times two is 110. So 110 square feet over one hour. Instead of saying over one hour, we, we replace that with per hour. And that's what I mean about, we get rid of that fraction eventually, okay? But she paints 110 square feet per hour. And the reason we talk about those is, is that gives us a unit of comparison. That, that is easily comparable to, or comparable, I guess, to anybody else's pace, however fast they, uh, they, they paint. But rarely, I mean, maybe, I guess depending on the size of the area, it might not take Angela, um, I think it was Angela, <laughs> it might not take her a whole hour to paint that. So um, we can always break it down from that hour and say, well, she's got to paint for 45 minutes. That's three quarters of an hour and she's gonna cover this much time. Or better yet, we can look at how much space does she have to cover, and we can tell, you know, how much space does she have to paint, and we can tell how long that's gonna take her. It's kind of, you know, it's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, the next of these, your turn problems here, say Paige mows one-sixth of an acre and one-fourth of an hour. So how many acres does she mow per hour? Well, we take area, over time. Because we want to know per hour, we want the time on the bottom. Okay. You could write this as, um, you could find a different unit rate that would say, how long would it take her to mow one acre? And that would be a completely different unit rate and useful for other things. So since we, uh, since on this one, we want area over time, Acres are, is, a, is a form of area, okay, one-sixth divided by one-fourth. And we're just going to rewrite that as a division problem that's a little bit easier to handle. One-sixth divided by one-fourth, we keep switch flip. One-sixth times four over one. And we could do some cross-reducing here, just to make this a little bit easier. They're both multiples of two. The four is two times two, and six is three times two. So we get uh, one times two is two. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Three times one is three. So she mows two-thirds of an acre per one hour or just per hour, okay? <clears throat> the interesting thing is that you can always change these unit rates because two thirds of an acre per hour might be useful, but it also means that she mows two acres in three hours. That's interesting too. Um, all right, next one, Greta uses three ounces of pasta to make three fourths of a serving of pasta, okay? So we want to know how many ounces per serving. So it's always nice to write it, write this form first. Ounces over servings. So that we know how to set up our, our ratios here. So we have ounces, we have three of those over three-fourths of a serving. And I kind of write this as three-fourths that way. And now I'll rewrite it as a division problem. Three, or we could say three over one, divided by three fourths. Well, we don't divide fractions, we keep switch flip. So three over one 
times 4 over 3. I can cross reduce my 3's. There's 1, 3, 1, 3. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. So we get 4 ounces per, oh my gosh, my pen is deciding not to work, <laughs> per serving. Come on, you can do it. Okay, four ounces of pasta per serving. All right, using unit rates. So now we want to use them. Um, it says that you can use unit rates to simplify rates uh, and ratios that appear complicated, such as those containing fractions in both the numerator and denominator. This example says that two pools are leaking. After 15 minutes, pool A leaked two-thirds of a gallon. After 20 minutes, pool B leaked three-fourths of a gallon. And sometimes you would see this because, you know, maybe at, at the 15-minute mark, one of them might have been a nice round number, uh, but the other one might have been something really weird or tough to measure. Okay? But the question here is, which pool is leaking faster? So we want to find the unit rate in, uh, in volume, which is gallons, per time, which is hours. Each pool is leaking. Convert the fir uh, first convert minutes to hours. So 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour, and 20 minutes is a third of an hour. And this is because we, we figured this out this way. We would say 15 minutes. How many minutes are in an hour? 60 and we reduce that fraction to one-fourth. And 20 minutes over 60 minutes in an hour reduces to one-third. That's why. Okay. Uh, so pool A is two-thirds of a gallon per 15 minutes, or two-thirds over one-fourth. They do that division. I'm just focusing on the left side right now. Um, so they do that division, so they keep switch flip. And 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 1 is 1. <coughs> and you can use either 8 thirds or 2 and 2 thirds as your representation. For pool B, looking at the right side now, we have 3 fourths of a gallon over 1 third of an hour. So 3 fourths divided by 1 third keeps which flip again. 3 fourths times 3 over 1 gives me nine-fourths, or two and one-fourth gallon per hour. And so we want to compare those unit rates. Two and two-thirds is bigger than uh, two and one-fourth, so pool A is leaking faster. Okay, I'm sure we've got a, a your turn on that. Okay, we do. So one tank is filling at a rate of three-fourths of a gallon per two-thirds minutes or two-thirds of a minute. The second tank is filling at a rate of five-eighths of a gallon per one-half of a minute. So we already have everything in a good rate. We're, we're going to deal with we're going to deal with gallons over minutes. Okay. For uh, let's say tank A, this first one is tank A. For tank A, we have three-fourths over two-thirds. Because it's hard to compare two-thirds of a minute to one-half of a minute, we go with finding amount per one minute. And so we're kind of looking into the future here. Uh, that'll be divided by two-thirds. We will keep switch flip three-fourths times three halves, and we get three times three is nine, four times two is eight, so nine over eight. I'm going to leave it as an improper fraction. For the second tank, tank B, we'll kind of work on it over here, we have five-eighths of a gallon per one-half of a minute. So I'll rewrite that as a division problem, five-eighths divided by one-half. I'm going to work more vertically here so I don't try to cram it in there. Five-eighths times two over one. And if we multiply straight across, 
Hold on. Yeah. If we multiply straight across, we see we have 10. 5 times 2 is 10. 8 times 1 is 8. You might be thinking that you want to reduce this, which you should. You should get 5 fourths. Okay. But since this one's in 8s also, it might be helpful to leave this one in 8s. Okay. But both of these are correct answers. Uh, you would say that the 5 fourths is a little bit more correct. Um, but also remember what these mean, right? This means that this is filling at a rate of uh, 10 eighths of a gallon or one and one fourth of a gallon um, per minute. And the other one is filling at a rate of nine eighths of a gallon per minute. Um, and another way, again, another way to look at these is this also means that this fills nine gallons in eight minutes where this one fills 10 gallons in eight minutes. Sometimes I, I think of that, that more traditional rate, uh, but a very, more, a very much more com uh, comparable rate is a little bit easier to deal with. Okay? So 10 gallons in eight minutes or 10 eighths of a gallon in one minute is faster. So tank A, sorry, tank B. Tank B fills faster. Since the main thing that we were talking about today when we were talking about rates was a, a measurement of speed, I think speed today will be our code word. So our code word for the day, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh boy. My pen is totally freaking out now. Um, our code word for the day will be speed. Okay, I think we can handle that. That right there. Code word. All right. So make sure you watch that video. Fill out that reflection. Let me know if you have any questions. And we will see you in class. Have a good day.